Coming up next, sifting through the mess that is USA Rugby. Brought to you by Friends of the British Council. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up, talking rugby in New York City at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34, just next to Madison Square Garden, and I am here with the bubbling, dashing Steve Lewis. Steve, we're going to talk a little USA Rugby on and off the pitch. Let's start with off the pitch. Off the pitch, um, it's been a pretty tempestuous weekend in the world of governance. Um, so finally, after some concerted pressure from a Congress that finally came alive and realized what its job was, um, uh, there was a petition, a recall petition filed um, by myself and supported by 15 other Congress members uh, looking for the recall of four board members. Will Chang, uh, Rob King, Bob Kimmett and uh, Jeremiah Johnson. Over the course of the week, it transpired that um, Chang and King did not want to go through that process, so they resigned. Uh, Bob Kimmett, um, who did some stellar work at the weekend in D.C., his time is terming out anyway uh, next week at the board meeting, so he will be gone. And there was an uh, actual recall petition and vote last night on Jeremiah Johnson, the Congress rep to the board, and he survived. Uh, the vote there was 26 to 9, so 9 People voted against him, um, but it was a resounding victory for Jeremiah. He, his friends on Congress um, decided that he should not be tarnished with the same brush as the rest of the board. I well, that, that's a view, but one could argue that the, the system was tested and it worked out that he was maintained. He's been maintained. I uh, disagreed vociferously and still do. He shouldn't be there. He's part of the same failed board. That lost us $10 million in two years. All right, so that kind of brings us up to speed. So, so what happens next? On what happens next. Yeah, so, so that's done and dusted. Um, it's really the end of this first phase. Uh, when I got in Congress, uh, my, my you know, motivation was to expose this board and to just to make things better for American rugby um, in the sense that the board had failed. It was quite clear between pro, between a high-performance overspend, and between the rim debacle that was about to unfold that this board shouldn't be there. So we've got rid of this board. So that's success. Um, but now comes the interesting part. We have to rebuild. We have to move forward. Um, so what we have to do now is there are two transitional board members being appointed for a 90-day period. And then Congress in August or September. Who's appointing them? Uh, the Congress Nominating Committee. And, and that's, that's a of... whole other can of worms. Oh. But anyway, back to the point. And then in August, a whole new board is um, repopulated. And that board then will choose a CEO. So we, we are looking at, uh, it's, you know, it's overstated this recently, it's darkest before the dawn. It's pretty nasty right now. Um, but the worst is behind us. There's, there's some stuff going to come out which will implicate various people. But um, we've got an opportunity. New board, new CEO, new start. Bruce McLean sat in one of our early shows over there, and he said that a board member could have to pay a certain amount of money to be on a board. Is that going to happen? No. You no, think I mean, it should happen? I, I do, yeah. Uh, non-profit board. You, you bring, minimum? You, you bring one of three things. You either write a check. If you're on the board of the Met, you write a check. Or you bring industry expertise. You bring some knowledge of rugby. This last board had no knowledge of rugby. Harvard B team in the 70s doesn't cut it for me. So... You bring, they, they were not connected to the game. Their knowledge of the game and their knowledge of professional sports and their knowledge of sports management were lacking. That's why they failed. And the important thing is here that we cannot allow the same people, the same process that put a failed board in place to be responsible for the next board. So that's the challenge for going, Congress in the next couple of weeks. All right, how about, can you give us a brief description of the situation with the Congressional Nominating Committee that is appointing these... Bridge gap. Yeah, so, so the current process, um, as laid out by the bylaws, and we're sort of slaves to this, by, this bylaw, these bylaws, which are um, both outdated and um, not appropriate, not fit for purpose. The current by, bylaws set it up that there is a nominating committee um, between three and five people. It's currently five people. The chairman of the nominating committee is chosen by Congress, and that's Marnie Vath. The other four members of the nominating committee are appointed by the board. 
historically, that nominating committee decides uh, in its own mind which are the best candidates and puts those candidates forward for a ratification. So that's either yes or no. So Congress chooses, Congress has to trust implicitly the nominating committee. They gave us the best candidates. Clearly, when five out of your six candidates have resigned before their time, that process has failed. There are many of us in Congress who believe the process should be different, that the nominating committee should put forward a slate of candidates, three to five, and then you can choose. Right now, Congress, we don't know who the other candidates were. We've got to take it on trust that these are the best two or these are the best four. And clearly that's failed. Clearly I'm against that, and hopefully that changes. Okay, Stephen, we are out of time on this segment, which was USA Rugby off the pitch, but at least check out our segment about USA Rugby on the pitch, which specifically is about the CRC 7s and the Wales versus South Africa match. And on that note, I'm Matt McCarthy for Steve Lewis. You're on Rugby Wrap-Up in New York City, signing off.